Good day, seniors, and welcome back. Today we will conclude our series on cartoon studies. My name is Mrs. Daisel, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to teach you how to identify the purpose, the message, and the point of view in cartoons. Since this is the last video on cartoon studies, it is very important that you first work through parts one to three because you first need to understand the concepts I deal with in these videos as they are staggered in a very specific order. Once you've worked through this final video with me, you will be equipped to answer question three in the exam paper with ease and confidence. As I've mentioned before, I will provide you with a booklet containing questions on cartoons from previous exam papers. And once you've completed these questions by yourself, I will also provide you with a memo and an explanation of the memo answers. This is a supplement to these videos. Remember that as we work through today's video, you need to apply your knowledge of visual literacy techniques and the components of humor that we have studied in the first three videos. Well then, are you ready to begin? Let's do this. In order to get a full overview of the different elements of cartoons, Let's have a look at what we've studied so far. All these concepts tie in together to create the final product, so it is important that you work through videos 1, 2, 3 before you study this one. In videos 1, 2 and 3 we covered the following. What is a cartoon? The subject of the cartoon. Different visual literacy techniques and also how humour is created. Today, we will study the following, the cartoonist's point of view, the message of the cartoon, and ultimately the purpose of the cartoon. Now, bear in mind, you will also be given a cartoon to analyze as part of your comprehension section in paper one. So everything you've learned in this series should be applied to that section as well. Here we have an overview of today's tutorial. However, these elements do not stand apart from each other. They are interconnected and you will be asked to answer questions in the exam which include aspects from all three elements. The next slide will clarify what I mean. Right, so let's have a look at the purpose, the point of view and the message of cartoons and how they relate to each other. So we start with the easiest part, purpose can either be to entertain, to criticize something in society or someone, or to persuade. Then, point of view. Is the cartoonist's attitude towards this issue negative, positive, or neutral? How does the cartoonist convey his attitude and point of view? Refer to the visual literacy techniques. In other words, things like irony, puns, um, speech bubbles, body language, facial expressions, all these things we've covered already. And then lastly, the message. Identify the issue in one short sentence. In other words, what is the issue the cartoonist is tackling here? Then explain how visual literacy techniques contribute to bring about the message. Okay, so can you see how these different elements are connected? The cartoonist doesn't create a cartoon without having a purpose in mind. Sometimes a cartoon is just a little joke meant to make you giggle, smirk, or at least smile. In that case, the cartoonist only wants to entertain her audience. There is no deeper meaning that you have to analyze. Puns are an example of such easy dad jokes. However, you probably won't get a cartoon as simple as that in your exam. Instead, you should prepare for cartoons where the purpose is to criticize some aspect of our society or where the cartoonist is trying to persuade you to agree with her point of view. In such cases, the attitude of the cartoonist must be analyzed in order to understand what her message to us is. This is especially important in cartoons where the cartoonist is trying to persuade us to bring about some form of change in our society. The process of connecting the dots is not linear. In other words, sometimes it is easier to work out the message of the cartoon first, 
Then ask yourself what the cartoonist's attitude is towards this issue and only then understand what her purpose is in creating the cartoon in the first place. Therefore, this is important. Don't rush through your reading of the cartoon. Take your time to analyze and understand what is going on. If you are patient and confident in your abilities, I guarantee that you will score big time. Okay, so the cartoon on this slide does not necessarily have to be complicated. It depends on the type of questions the examiner will ask you in your exams. So let's have a look. Garfield, the cat, is typing his Christmas gifts wish list on the laptop. In frame two, he keeps typing, showing us that it is a long list. In the final frame, he asks John, his owner, how much ink there is in the printer to print out his Christmas list. So what is he implying? That his list is so long, he needs a lot of ink to print it out. In other words, he is materialistic and greedy. If the exam questions were to ask you to look for a deeper meaning, which is unlikely with this type of light-hearted cartoon, what would you say? Since we know the subject matter of the cartoon is Christmas and Garfield's greed in asking for so many presents, what might the cartoonist's point of view be about how most of us view Christmas? We can probably be criticized for being a materialistic society. Or the cartoonist could be saying that the true message and meaning of Christmas has been forgotten. Then the purpose of this cartoon would change. It would no longer be a little joke that we smile about because the cartoonist just wants to entertain us. In such a case, the cartoonist is criticizing how greedy and materialistic we've become as a society, and that we no longer celebrate the birth of Christ, but use this holy day to get as many gifts as possible. Therefore, we can also assume that the cartoonist is hoping to persuade us to change for the better by celebrating the true purpose of Christmas instead. Do you see that cartoons can have more than one purpose at the same time? The cartoon in this slide is entertaining because it reveals a universal truth about people's greed, but it also criticizes and persuades the audience to change for the better. Right, so this cartoon is more complicated. Therefore, you should take your time when viewing it. Let's have a look. So at the top, we have a heading which reads COVID-19, which has proved to be most resistant to medical science. First, we have the alpha variant. We are all familiar with that. That was the first strain. After that, we see the beta variant. After that, the delta variant. And then finally, Something unexpected, anti-vaxxers, and there stands a person, not a virus. So right, you look carefully at all the clues the cartoonist is giving you because he wants you to understand his message. Read whatever draws your eye first. For example, my eye goes to the pictures first and I recognize the shape of the COVID-19 virus. I notice that they are each labeled differently and then I'm confused when I look at the last image in the cartoon. I study the label under this image carefully and squint my eyes to make out the things written on the papers that the man is holding up. I'm still confused. Now I read the caption or heading. COVID-19, which has proved to be most resistance to medical science? This rhetorical question makes me look at the images again. Now I notice the facial expressions and facial features of the three different variants or strains of COVID. And I notice that each one looks meaner than the previous one. The beta variant is showing some teeth and his facial expression seems more sinister. The delta variant looks even scarier because it has the widest smile, which shows more sharp teeth than the previous one. When I relate these images with a caption, I realize that the cartoonist is implying that each variant is more resistant to medical science than the one before it. Now it brings me back to the final image. 
The label says anti-vaxxers. And I start laughing because now I get the joke. Medical science has come up with a vaccine to combat COVID-19, but the anti-vaxxers refuse to get vaccinated because they believe in conspiracy theories about the vaccine. I can see this in the tablet screen the angry man is holding up. And therefore, medical science can't treat them. The cartoonist is criticizing people who don't want to be vaccinated because, according to the cartoonist, they reject the research and findings of medical science. So the joke is on them. I can tell that the cartoonist's attitude to anti-vaxxers is negative. He is mocking them and implying that they are illogical for rejecting the vaccine. Now the message is also clear. Cartoonist believes all people should be vaccinated and he's trying to persuade us as a society not to resist the only medical solution to the pandemic. Now, it is important not to get offended by the message of a cartoon. Remember, that is only the cartoonist's point of view and that your only job is to answer the exam questions thoroughly to get the maximum amount of marks. The examiner doesn't want to hear your point of view, but only your analysis of what is going on in the cartoon. So first I want you to answer the questions on this slide on your own before you continue. It's best if you pause the video while you do this and it is very important to write your answers down on paper so that you get the much needed practice of expressing your ideas clearly because you'll have to do this in the exam. Once you've answered the questions, continue playing the video and compare your answers to mine. So you can pause here. So let's tackle these questions. Study the cartoon carefully first. So here's the first thing to draw my eye, and it's the big aeroplane with SAA written in large font on the side of the plane. The next thing my eye moves to is the speech bubble. Fill her up, stop at 10.4 billion rand. At first I don't fully understand. Then I notice that he's talking to a man who's filling the fuel tank and the fuel pump says treasury. I also notice the fine print. The man on the ground has the name Praveen printed on his briefcase and the man on the ladder is labeled Tito. Now I get the message. These two men are Praveen Gordon, the Minister of Public Enterprises, which includes South African Airways, and the other character is Tito Mboweni. The Minister of Finance. The issue being addressed is the fact that Praveen Gordon is constantly bailing out South African Airlines by using the taxpayers money, the Treasury, to do so. So the Minister who is responsible for overseeing the efficient management of SAA is not doing anything to fix the corruption and mismanagement. Instead, he keeps bailing the bankrupt airline out by giving it a fuel injection of money from the Treasury. The cartoonist's attitude to this issue is negative. He is implying that it is wrong to use 10.4 billion rand of taxpayers' money to bail out SAA instead of addressing and fixing the problems that have bankrupted the airline over and over. Therefore, I can also tell that the purpose of the cartoon is to criticize Praveen Gordon's management of SAA and the fact that the Minister of Finance, Tito Mboweni, has agreed to help bail out a bankrupt and mismanaged institution by giving it billions of rands from the Treasury. Now, as you've probably noticed, some cartoons require you to have some general knowledge of current political and social events. Please keep yourself informed of these events by listening to the news on the radio or watching it on television. You can also easily install the News24 app on your phone. Right, now I'd like you to try again. On your own, study the cartoon carefully and then let's have a look at these questions. Firstly, what is the subject or issue addressed in this cartoon? Who or what is the cartoonist criticising? What is his point of view about this issue? 
refer to the visual and verbal clues in the cartoon, especially the broken rainbow. And lastly, what change does the cartoonist hope to bring about? Remember to write down the answers to each question in detail before continuing with this video, then I will discuss the cartoon with you. So pause here. What is the first thing you notice? Probably the splintered rainbow at the top of the cartoon. Then I notice the stick figures in the drawing and I see that the two boys are in school uniform and they have sad facial expressions because of their downturned mouths. They are reaching for each other, but their teachers are pulling them in different directions. Each teacher is pulling a child to a separate school, and the schools both have dark storm clouds above them. So I know the cartoonist is implying something negative about the school situation. I still don't understand what's going on. So I look at the speech bubbles and see that the boys' names are written in bold to emphasize something. It takes me a moment and then I understand what the subject matter of the cartoon is. These two children are going to two different schools because they are of different races. Jabu is black and Brian is white. The teachers are pulling them apart even though they clearly want to be together. So the teachers symbolize the Department of Education and the small children symbolize the new or born free generation. My conclusion is that the cartoonist is saying the Department of Education is not doing enough to integrate different races in the school system and that the youth of today don't want to be separated in different schools because of their race. I also understand that the rainbow symbolizes our so-called rainbow nation. The fact that the rainbow is broken symbolizes that we are not a rainbow nation if there are still separate schools for separate races, like township schools versus the former Model C schools. This also explains why there are dark clouds over the schools. It's obvious that the cartoonist wants this situation to change. He wants the Department of Education to do more to integrate schools and offer the same quality education to all races. Were you able to come to the same conclusions? Which parts of your process and answers were similar to mine? If you went off track, do you now understand where you went wrong? And most importantly, did you learn something useful from this process analysis so that you can implement it in answering your own exam questions. So now we look at cartoons that aim to persuade. And I hope you've realized by now that there is no clear line between criticism and persuasion. They often go hand in hand. So don't worry if you aren't sure which one it is, because it's probably both. Now view the cartoon on this slide carefully. I'll ask certain questions and I want you to write down your answers before you continue to listen to the next question. I cannot overstate the importance of writing, not typing, answers down. When you prepare for an exam, this helps you to revise past papers properly. We all need to practice getting the clever ideas in our heads onto paper and in such a way that our answers express our thoughts clearly. Too many marks are lost because learners do not write enough information or can't express their ideas in a clear and logical manner. So remember, write, write, write. Okay, here we go. The first question. What issue or problem is the cartoonist addressing in this cartoon? And how can you tell? Refer to the text or words to motivate your answer. Right, the next. Does the cartoon reveal a negative or positive point of view on this issue? Motivate your answer by referring to the graphics or pictures. What change does the cartoonist hope to bring about in our society? How do the pictures or visual aspects of the cartoon play on our emotions? Or you have to refer to specific examples in your answer. Okay, so once you've written them down, you can play this video again and then listen to my answers.
So please pause here. Here we go. The problem or issue the cartoonist is addressing is society's cruelty towards animals. And we see that it's not only domestic animals like pets, but also wild animals that have become extinct due to man's activities. There is a written sign on the dog's cage that makes this issue pretty clear. It reads, Animal Cruelty. There is another posted sign in the graveyard of animal skeletons which reads, Current Mass Extinction. Lastly, the thought bubbles rising from the skull of a dead animal states, We feel your pain. The point of view is deeply negative. Look at this. The little dog is chained and cannot move about freely. Its water bowl is turned upside down, implying that it is not cared for. There are flies circling over its head, and it seems small and vulnerable. The rest of the frame is taken up by an enormous graveyard of animal skeletons, growing smaller as it disappears into the distance. This shows us that the number of dead animals is too high to be counted. The skulls and bones show mass extinction and it is shocking to the reader. Also, the skulls seem to have sad expressions, like the downturned eyes of the elephant skull in the foreground. The cartoonist's message to the audience is that society must start protecting animals especially animals in the wild, because they are becoming extinct through man's behaviour. The cartoonist uses emotive language to make his point. Emotive language is the type of language and the type of uh, words chosen to make us feel some emotional response. So let's have a look at the emotive language here. Words such as cruelty, pain and mass extinction make the audience feel sad or guilty about the fate of these animals. We feel a sense of responsibility and a desire to protect pets and wildlife. And there you have it. You have now answered the most difficult questions you can get in a cartoon section. And now you know that you can do it. All it takes is patience, paying attention to the details and practice. Okay, you are going to do the following on your own. I want you to answer these questions. Remember to write them down as you go along. Number one, explain how irony has been used to create humor. Hint, look at the dates above the two frames and then look for the two things which are the opposite in each frame. Because remember, Irony has to do with two opposites. Then, number two, what issue is the cartoonist addressing? Three, is his point of view positive or negative? Then, what is the purpose of this cartoon? So remember, they can go hand in hand. Is it to entertain, to criticize, or to persuade? So it can be more than one thing. Then lastly, discuss how the artist has used satire to convey his message to the audience. Okay, seniors, for this last one, I will not give you the answers. So it is very important that you apply what you've learned so far, not just in this video, but cartoon study, studies part one through four. The first thing you need to do is look at this cartoon carefully. Figure out what's going on. So there's a car. It has a banner on it that says, just got married. And then we see a man trying to club a wife and she looks frightened. So here are the questions. What is the issue or subject matter being addressed in this cartoon? Identify and discuss the visual and verbal clues in the cartoon which make the issue clear. 
What is the cartoonist's attitude towards the issue at hand? In other words, positive, negative, why do you think so? And lastly, what change for the better is the cartoonist calling for in this cartoon? Good luck. And that brings us to the end of our series on cartoon studies. You should now be able to answer any questions on cartoons with confidence. Remember that the skills you have learned here can be applied to other aspects of language and even literature. For example, the different techniques to create humour are not limited to cartoons. Be on the lookout for the booklet on cartoons which will follow soon. And I hope that you have found this tutorial series helpful in understanding how to analyse the different elements of a cartoon and to get an idea of the things the examiners will ask of you. So until next time, remember, work hard. Your future is worth it. This is Mrs. Stasel, signing off.